Good morning, Hi at Nine listeners. Today, I've got an intriguing story about a group of Massachusetts cannabis businesses taking a stand against the feds. I'm a farmer, begins John Potaski. Uh, I know I just butchered that name and I apologize, John. Uh, of Wiseacre Farm in West Stockbridge, Massachusetts. I grow vegetables, flowers, and yes, cannabis, and I'm damn good at it. Wiseacre Farm, a state licensed outdoor cannabis farm, represents a new era in agriculture. But it's not all rosy. The farm now cultivating 4,000 cannabis plants is part of a coalition suing the federal government over what they see as archaic and harmful laws. In a landmark case filed against Attorney General Merrick Garland for four Massachusetts cannabis businesses and investors, including Wiseacre Farm, Canna Provisions, Geisa Sellers, and Verano Holdings Corporation, are challenging the federal government's stance on cannabis. The lawsuit filed in the U.S. District of Massachusetts claims that the federal laws are unfairly burdening businesses operating legally in the state. Despite Massachusetts decriminalizing cannabis in 2008, legalizing medical cannabis in 2012, and approving adult use cannabis in 2016, these businesses are still considered federally illegal due to the, 19, due to the 1970 Controlled Substances Act. Meg Sanders, CEO of Canna Provisions, argues, we want to see cannabis as an industry thrive, be treated fairly and have access to more than more than just checking and savings accounts. The complaint led by the prominent law firm Boys Shiler Flexner centers on the argument that while Congress can ban cannabis from interstate commerce, it oversteps its authority by interfering with state regulated interstate operations. The crux of their case points to a 2005 Supreme Court ruling, which they argue is outdated, given the shift in Congress and the executive branch stance on cannabis. Now, the plaintiffs, including Sanders, feel jaded by empty promises of federal reform. It says, we've heard time and time again that something might happen, but so far no one has delivered. As of today, 38 states have legalized cannabis in some form, a stark contrast from 2005 when no state regulated cannabis businesses existed. Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission reported in August the adult use, adult use sales had hit the $5 billion mark in gross sales. Despite these numbers, Standards highlights the industry's challenges, citing that only 24% of cannabis corporations uh, nationwide are profitable. The lawsuit also addresses the green tax, the additional cost cannabis businesses face due to the industry's federal status. Pasaki says everything is just 10 times as expensive and takes three times as long. One of the uh, lawsuit's key points is the danger of operating largely in cash, a necessity due to the industry's banking restrictions, which they claim threatens public safety. Additionally, the plaintiffs are ex excluded from various federal initiatives and face punitive tax measures under Section 280E of the Federal Tax Code, preventing them from writing off any business expenses. Now, Wiseacre and Canada Provisions aren't just businesses, they're community pillars. From Wiseacre being the largest employer in West Stockbridge during the harvest season to Canada Provisions recogni uh, recognition as Corporate Citizen of the Year by the Lee Chamber of Commerce, these, co these companies are proving their local value to their, to their local communities. Both Pisaki and Sanders entered the industry recognizing cannabis's potential healing abilities. Despite the progress, they acknowledge that the stigma around cannabis persists, fueled by federal government's attitudes. Sanders reflects, if we are successful, I'm thrilled. If we fail, I'm thrilled to be a part of this lawsuit too. This isn't a stop, this is a journey. I believe in safe access to plant-based wellness. Now the US District Courts of Massachusetts now has a 60-day window in which to respond to this bold challenge. The lawsuit isn't just a legal battle, it's a symbol of the growing dissident against outdated prohibition views. From my perspective here at the High Nine News, it's like watching David take on Goliath, only this time David's armed with a cannabis leaf and a whole lot of common sense. As we eagerly await the court's response, one thing is clear, the tide is turning. The narrative of cannabis as a harmful and misunderstood plant is crumbling under the weight of evidence and public opinion. And let's be honest, in a world where you can enjoy a latte with a double shot of espresso, the idea that cannabis is still tangled with this federal red tape is ridiculous. Stay tuned. We'll keep an eye on this case. I'm Stone Slade reporting for the Hyatt Nine News. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. It's about wow. time we um, reopened the Wickard versus Filburn nonsense that we got out of Rach case. Mm -hmm. Stone, what they're talking about, the 2005 case was Rach versus Gonzalez. And I've talked already about how Clarence Thomas, in, in the dissent there, um, he just he just shredded the federal government. That The only way this works is if you have a uniform policy of federally, that's how you get the Wickard versus Filburn um, hacking. But 
As he pointed out then, and it's even worse now, there is no uniform federal policy for cannabis. We have the, the McClintock Blumenauer, you can't spend money now, which ties their hands. And they've backed away. They've got all sorts of internal um, non-prosecution documents and memos out there. The policy's shit. And it's about time somebody called them on it. And I think this new conservative court will take a fresh look at this and tell the federal government not. Nah. And also, you cannot say with a straight face it should be in Schedule One because they claim there's no, you know, current medical use. It might have been a true in 1937. It's not true now because it is used. We have the PTS study, PTSD study from Sue Sisley is one, just one example. It's about time they flush this old thinking down. I hope they get jurisdiction over this and they can challenge it because I think they're going to lose. State, the federal government's going to lose. Mm -hmm. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Dale, 100 percent on there. That, that That's exactly what needs to happen. And and that that is the course that needs to happen. And the federal government would definitely lose that battle with those types of arguments being placed before them. Nothing else from you guys? Really? Nope. You guys quiet over here? You yeah, I mean, it, it, when I, when I, when I, I know I brought this I brought this one up last week, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm saying like it could set president and um, it is very, very, very telling. Or I think it was like two weeks ago. It's it's very interesting uh, that they have like all of the components within this uh, uh, lawsuit to make it work. You got MSOs, you got small business owners, and you have the one listed name on it is a black social equity <laughs> applicant. <laughs> so, like they're pandering to every notable constituency here. <laughs> like mm -hmm. so, if you're a guest. If you're against this initiative, then you're not American and you hate weed. It's exactly. pretty much what they're saying with it. And so um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see where it goes. It uh, it's just, it just has all the uh, pandering ingredients uh, right there to just know that they're poised for victory. I mean, that kind Pander of away, baby. That that kind of messaging yep. does resonate with voters. <laughs> in all fairness, we got we got somebody for everybody. We got MSOs. We got the big bankers yes. in there. We have the small, the little guys in there, and we've got the social equity applicants. The the one name that is in it's the in one name there is, is the one black social equity applicant. So if you don't like this, if you don't like this uh, this initiative, then we don't like you, and you need to shut the hell up and know your place. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Oh man. The token one. The token one. Oh boy. Here we go, Rico. But we're gonna keep. We're, yeah, we're we're gonna just keep this train 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 rolling. We